Welcome, my name is Ofer, and today I'm going to cover with you a fatal scripting mistake that when done can render your entire data useless. And it's important to understand the origin of the problem, how to avoid it, and what the warning signs are that you're nearing uh, to perform that issue. So we're going to talk about that today. I'll do a short demo of this and also how to avoid it. Okay, so let's talk about the, the problem. So the problem happens when the scripter uses an ad hoc randomization code and then you do not keep a copy of the randomized code output. So for example, if it's in ordering randomization logic and you don't keep the output um, saved. Now that's the accident waiting to happen. When you actually do the accident is when you're, you're actually using that randomization logic output with uh, questions and topics and answers, probably when piping stuff to them. What happens is that while during the field work, everything seems to be working great, the actual data that is captured is completely useless. So you're going to end up with a data set that data processing simply won't be able to analyze. Okay, so let's see an example of this. I have a demo survey and in here I just have three questions. The first one is what color do you like? And then why do you like that color? And then a grid that shows you the colors and then um, a rating from one to five to tell me how much you like that color. And the thing is that the person that wrote this script, which is me, of course, for the purpose of this demo, instead of using the default um, built-in randomization option for the answers, instead, I went ahead and put in here the curly braces zero in order to pipe the actual colors later on and to decide which color to pipe into which answer, I've done that in the script. And it's a pretty straightforward script. I have an array with all my colors, one, two, three, four, five, six, those are the six answers here. And then I have a randomization array, which I create using the create random array of six items. And then I just uh, prompt it so we understand what the uh, order that was chosen in or sorry is and then we go over um, the array from one to six and then just pipe the relevant answer into the answer text using the set answer text format so we use this indirect array which was randomly created to access the colors array and you can see it right here we just access the colors array with the um, randomized array which is this one Okay, we take the correct ID and use that here. And that produces, at least for the interviewer uh, side, the correct results. Then what we do next is we pipe in the selected answer text from the previous question right into the question text here and ask uh, what the most, uh, uh, why, why do you like that color the most? And then finally we have that grid which just follows the same logic. It just goes over the previous uh, answers that we've uh, uh, added or piped, and then just fills those answers into the topics. Relatively easy script, and I'm gonna head and run it. I'm gonna go ahead and run it. So I have my emulator set up. The first thing that shows up is the uh, prompt of the order that was chosen. So in this case, it's not one, two, three, four, five, but five or four, five, six, two, three, one. Again, this is uh, this comes out of this prompt right here. We use the int array to string function, which gives you the ability to take an integer array and just uh, uh, get the string representation of that. And so I click on OK, and indeed, instead of seeing uh, red, green, blue, yellow, black, and orange. Everything is randomized perfectly. So yellow, black, orange, green, blue, red. Let's choose yellow. That's the first answer I remind you. Why do you like yellow the most? I'm going just for reference 
uh, right in here yellow so that we know that this run of the survey was done this interview was done uh, after choosing yellow this will serve as a reference later on and then finally how much I like each color so I'm gonna say yellow is five and the rest is four okay so I'm gonna click OK and assumingly the data was just collected everything went on fine the problem is that the data that we've collected is completely useless. Now let me show you why. Okay, so I exported all of the data. I have five interviews here. You can see them right here. One, two, three, four, five. And this is the answer for question number one. Remember the question number one is the one that asks you which color do you like the most? Now here's the problem. You can see, and question number two, of course, is the open-ended question. And if you remember for reference, I put in here the actual color that I've chosen. And here's the problem. In question number five, you might already see it. All of the codes here that read one, okay, in one of the interviews it meant orange, and one of them it meant yellow. In a different one, it meant yellow again. And then in a different one, it was blue. Now from a data perspective, data processing perspective, this is completely useless. Mind you, of course, that this column would not read the actual color chosen, but just the reason why we like that color the most. So the data processing person has no, um, no ability to understand what one means. And he would um, analyze this row the orange one this is exactly the same as the yellow one because it's the same code and the reason for that is because we use to pipe the that text into that same answer which gets the same code and the same goes for the single choice grid which is right here all of these numbers are exactly the same but this is the first uh, topic I rated five my uh, chosen color and you can see that in this case, you don't know what the five means because it's the first topic. But in the case of this interview, the first topic read orange. And in the case of this interview, the first topic read yellow. Now, in case you don't understand what I'm talking about, because you can see here that it's orange and yellow. Again, remind, reminding you, this column would not read the actual color chosen. It would read the reason why we like orange or yellow or blue the most. So what do we have? Well, we actually just threw away all of our data. We spent all that time scripting, collecting data, and all of it is useless, completely useless. All right. Well, why did this happen? Again, it's because we ran a randomization code an ad hoc randomization code and we did not keep a copy of the randomization output then we use that randomization to pipe in our case into both the answers and then later the topics but it could have been done in a gazillion different ways as well um, using piping or any other logic to use that not saved randomization logic Reminding you again that the randomization logic was done right here. That is the source of the problem. That's the accident waiting to happen. And then this is the accident actually happening. And then the accident is happening again right here. All right. Well, what can you do then? How can you avoid this very fatal mistake? Actually, it's very easy. To avoid it, first, always try to use the built-in randomization options. It's the safest. Now, in our example, that's super, super easy, of course, because we just want to randomize the order. So the only thing we needed to do was to go to the Advanced tab on the question and activate the, randomiz the randomized answers. That's of course very easy to do and it's a very simple example because we've reduced the example to the minimum uh, occurrence 
of the problem, but it can get quite complicated. But still, there are enough mechanisms built in with uh, uh, callbacks and what have you not, if you're using loops or whatever, to still make use of the built-in randomization options and avoid this mistake. So that's, that's way number one and the safest way to avoid this problem. Moving on, if you can't do that, for whatever reason, you just can't use a built-in randomization option, what you absolutely want to do, and that's in the following order, is to always save your output of the randomization to first either a dummy variable, and I'm going to show you how um, in a couple of moments. That's the safest, the best and safest technique. Always save it. You can also save the output to a global vars variable, and I'll tell you why. Because the global vars are serialized, saved, and later on you can actually search for them in the log. The last technique that you can use, it's 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 not it's not good, and I'll tell you why in a sec. But still, it's better than nothing. Is to log the output using the trace function which will log it to the interview log and that way later on if worse comes to worse you can always either manually or write a piece of code that will analyze the interview logs of each and every interview that was collected now this this might end up costing you days of work but at least you won't um, lose the data so um, your best bet, a dummy variable, then a global var vars variable, and uh, logging to the log file using the trace function. But the nice thing about this is that you don't have to choose a technique. You can actually do all three or just two of the three uh, or just one of them. It's up to you. So let's um, go back to our questionnaire and now we'll go to the second chapter. Uh, now, it's those same three questions. What color do you like the most? Why do you like that color the most? And a rating. And in this case, it's written OK because we've chosen the technique of using dummy variables or dummy questions for this uh, survey. Let's examine what the difference in the code is. So first, we have a dummy question that just holds the actual colors that we have and instead of hard coding them we've added a scale called dummy colors put the scale right in and since it's a dummy question it just serves as a placeholder for the different um, um, colors it's much more robust and scalable because the code that you'll see in a moment makes use of this uh, 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 scale so later on if you add a color you just need to add it to the scale and all of the code adjusts automatically instead of in this case where you actually in the first case where you actually need to add it um, hard coded to the array and then create a different uh, sized array and loop differently etc. So we have um, this question the dummy colors question and we've also added an open ended question to hold the actual order that we've out that we've created so this dummy variable will hold the output of the randomization and this might be used later on by data processing to actually um, make use of the data now of course the best would have been if we've just um, activated the randomized uh, answers because then data processing just could have easily um, analyze the data the data would have just shown in the data set regularly and it was just randomized for viewing purposes uh, but I chose to go down a different route just to show you the little bit more complicated version of how to hold the data so what changed in the actual code let's go to this question and the star scripts okay so first I commented out the colors because we don't need them anymore they're in our dummy uh, question and now we have a new code the rest of the code is exactly the same as before in our new code um, first checks if uh, it gets the actual current 
randomization that we did from Q5, which is the dummy holder. Now, of course, the first time that we run, it's completely empty, so we need to create it. So we have this if structure here to actually create it. And here we create the array, we create a random array in the size of the answer count of Q underscore four, which is our dummy colors. That makes it so much more robust. And now we turn that array into a string and save it as the output of question number five. This, my friends, this is the um, heart of the solution. This makes everything okay because now we're saving the output. The rest of the code is just taking that output that we've just saved and uh, it turns it back into an array and then uses it to pipe uh, the answer text and then the other stuff is exactly the same. The only other difference that we have is that in this loop of the topics we just loop uh, over the amount of topics that we have instead of looping over six times. Now this very small change that we just uh, did that actually is going to save our data and I'll show you why. So here's our data again and now it's actually uh, the same data set, but we're looking at Q5, 6, 7, and 8. This is our colors um, dummy variable. Won't get an answer, not a problem. This is our order variable, and this is the, the important one. See how we've saved here the actual order 6, 2, 1, 5, 4, 3, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the one that makes the person understand that or the data processing person understand that the one here represents the first item here which is six and if we go back to the actual questionnaire to our colors question you see that item number six is orange this means that six is orange indeed it's orange and this means that topic number one relates to orange topic number two relates to the second item in the list in our case it was two that's green okay etc this small solution makes all of the field work now worthwhile because now we know the order so i chose the dummy variable technique i could have also used a vars variable to save the data it would have been much harder to then later on using the data processing part, but at least it would have meant that the data was saved somewhere, or I could trace it out to the log file. It's beyond the scope of this um, session to cover the log file and how to uh, access it and view the data, but uh, at least it would have been saved, which is better than not saving it at all. Lastly, we're gonna talk about warning signs. How do you know if there is a potential for this catastrophic issue in your script. Okay, so when you see the following, always, always be in doubt, meaning check it if you see these types of warnings. The first is if you see a list of answers or topics somewhere where all of the answers and topics read curly braces, meaning someone is going to pipe there something and if that someone is going to pipe in there something randomized without saving the randomization output, that's when you are um, going to get hit by this issue. So even if you see the curly braces, it doesn't mean that it's completely wrong. There are a lot of situations where you can have this and everything is okay. But if you see that list of answers or topic reading curly braces zero, watch out and investigate if the code that fills them in is in fact um, problematic. And I'm gonna show you a real quick tip about how to find out what code sets what. I'm back at my uh, script, and if I right click on a question, I can choose the find reference option here, and it will show me immediately which questions are referencing my question. So you see here where I can see the set answer. So immediately I can click that and know exactly 
who, what code is accessing my question. This is a great cool technique and it's going to save you a lot of time when trying to figure out and investigate who's accessing a question. Next up, if you see someone looping over a number of times and not a scale, watch out. Watch out. Usually loops are done over scales. If somebody is looping over numbered items and not scales, that might mean that that person is piping something later on to the loop and you won't have an idea what that something was if it was randomized and not saved. So loops over numbers instead of scales are a very big warning sign for this issue. Again, it can be perfectly fine, but be warned. Next up is using global variables, which, is, which are non-vars variable. And I'll show you real quick what I mean. Okay, back at the script, if I go into the advanced scripts, um, I have my functions here. Uh, it is possible to just put in here var xx equals 1. For example, this declares now a variable which can be accessed both from the function. So I can say var a equals xxx. Okay, that, that's a good syntax. Uh, and it can also be accessed from outside of the advanced function. So it is essentially a global variable, although it's very highly recommended not to use those because those are not serialized or saved when you do a stop and continue in the interview. Meaning each time you load the survey in the device again, it's going to get reset. So if you play around with it, it's very dangerous for a lot of reasons. But the most dangerous reasons is that this is not saved anywhere. So if this is the output, if this holds the output of a randomization logic, you are screwed. So don't do this. Instead, what you can do is you can say vars xxx equals 1. This is a global variable, and you can also define it instead of a um, just global. You can this access it right from a function. This still is a global variable accessible from anywhere in your code. But the nice thing about this is that it's serialized. It saves it is saved between stop and continue and it is written to the log and so if a worst case scenario happens you still have all of the data of this var written inside the log and inside the interview data so use of global known vars variable a big warning site big no-no um, and watch out for that the last thing you want to see or you want to warn yourself about is code that calls randomize array, create random array, create cyclic random array, all of the function that randomize or just random, random, all of these, you do a quick find to find them. And then if they exist, be very warned, check multiple times that the output is being saved. Here's an example. To find them, it's very easy. You just click on the search and survey, you put in here, random then you click on search and it will immediately show you who's calling a randomized function so i see it's in question number one and i see it's in question number six in question number six i can see the code that saves the output in question number one i can see it's not saved immediately i understand there's an issue i can stop everything and fix it so to sum things up the most important rule you need to keep in mind is a of course for this specific issue um, avoid not saving randomized output but the bigger learning out of this is that when you're scripting constantly think how DP are going to analyze the data output and if they can because ultimately the data is gonna reach DP so the best scenario is if you work with the data processing team together when scripting or if it's the same person that's fantastic but if not if you 
if you can't access the data processing team, if you cannot work together on the project, try to envision how you're going to analyze the data as a data processing person and see if the code that you're writing right now when scripting, if it makes any sense later on for the data.